Hello everyone. Welcome to Multisoft Virtual Academy. We are here to present your uh, we are here to present SAP ABAP live online free webinar with Multisoft Virtual Academy and I hope you all will really enjoy this session. This session is being organized by us as an initiative to let you know how the live online training shall be conducted and how the screen shall be shared with the participants. It is organized to have your all conversation with the subject matter expert who can actually, you know, introduce you about this ERP. SAP is widely demanded across the globe and this SAP ABAP training is being conducted by us for all the participants in India and across. You will be happy to know that you shall be provided with a complete learning material access by Multisoft Virtual Academy once you all will enroll for the session. With regards to the practical and online hands-on sessions, you will also be provided with the remote access to the SAP server so that you all can practice and completely come over with the hands-on session on SAP. I shall now give a brief introduction about our subject matter expert, Mr. Vikas, who shall be taking your live online webinar for SAP ABAP in association with Multisoft Virtual Academy. We are just waiting for some more participants to come and I shall then give the introduction of our subject matter expert and I'll also let you know about the agenda and the contents of this live online webinar for SAP ABAP with Multisoft Virtual Academy. Thank you so much for your all patience. We shall just start with the live online webinar and a small introduction of our facilitator. Thank you all for your patience. We shall now start with the live online webinar for SAP ABAP with Multisoft Virtual Academy. This live online webinar is an initiative to make you all aware about how virtual training session will go on and how you all will be interacting with your instructor. You can always come up with your queries and doubts since this will be an interactive session. You will be able to see the screen of the instructor and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. This live online webinar for SAP ABAP will be taken over by Mr. Vikas who has more than eight years of experience in SAP ABAP. He's a facilitator who is associated with us for a long time and he has been conducting variegated online and corporate trainings for us. The brief, brief about the contents and the agenda of this live online webinar, it includes what is ERP, why SAP's important ERP tool, features of SAP, SAP architecture, development tools provided by SAP ERP with ABAP, feature of SAP with ABAP. I hope you all shall sincerely enjoy this live online webinar session with Mr. Vikas, who will be your presenter now. He will be taking care of your live online training as well once you enroll in for the sessions with us. Post this webinar, you will be also receiving this recording so that you can refer this recording later on for your further understanding and better revision of the course. Just in case you have any query or any doubt, you can always get back to our website 
that is www.multisoftvirtualacademy.com. You can always drop in an email at info at the rate multisoftvirtualacademy.com. We are also available on our 24 by 7 available numbers that is plus 918130666 or plus 918130666209. Thank you so much for attending this live online webinar session for SAP ABAP with Multisoft Virtual Academy. We hope you all enjoy this session. Hello everyone. Thanks Shivali for the brief introduction and about the session. So we are going to start this webinar. This is based upon SAP ABAP. So as per the contents which are explained to you by Shivali, that in this session, in this webinar, we are going to discuss what is ERP why SAP is important ERP tool and what are the features of SAP, SAP architecture, development tools provided by SAP ERP with ABAP and the feature, future of SAP with ABAP. So we will discuss one by one First of all, we will discuss the ERP. So ERP basically stands for Enterprise Resource and Planning. If we talk about the ERP, then it is a huge term which is used widely. So enterprises means for a layman is a huge business organization. And if we talk about the resources, then they are the money, manpower, material, machinery, the marketing, and other various methods. And if we talk about the planning, then we can say that the active utilization and optimization of the resources. So this ERP term is interconnected. So with the planning, you are going to use your resources which are working for the huge business organization. And that is our enterprise. If we talk about the money with respect to the ERP, then we have a finance. And in finance, accounting, these terms deal with the money. And if we talk about the manpower, then the manpower with respect to the ERP, there is a various modules related to manage these manpower which are used under resource. So to utilize the to effectively utilize the manpower we use the resources in the term of manpower. And you will see EHS, HCM and various other kind of training we provide in the organization to update our manpower. And if we talk about the materials, then it comes with the warehouse, transportation, material management, and purchasing. And if we talk about the machinery, then that comes under your production, your quality assurance, your maintenance. Then if I come to the marketing point of view, then we have a sales, we have a marketing which comes under this resource. 
and we have a various methods which we use to manage the huge enterprises and they are the admin r and d scm crm this is supply chain management customer relationship management so these terms come under various methods they are interconnected as we talk about the enterprises resources and planning and there are the various erps available in the market if we talk about sap then it is one of the erp which is widely available in the world there are other erps available like the people soft or a collapse these are the other erps which are also available but sap is widely used because there are various reason why sap is most popular erp rather than the others there are many advantages over the others which we discuss in the coming slides so if we talk about the sap erp tool over other erp tools then yes if sap erp tool we are talking about then it means that it is a real time application real time application you mean to say that if something you want as a customer suppose you will give a something you can place some order and you can get a result within few seconds that yes i am able to receive this order at this much of date with within fraction of seconds so that every module which is interrelated in a asset if i talk about the sap there are the various modules which are interconnected to provide you a real time application if a customer places an order of 250 cars in the customer services then customer services will approach to the sales office sales office will approach to the peer hello everyone sorry for the interruption So oh, basically, we buy in here the ERP. So SAP ERP tool over other ERP tools. So as it's a real-time applications, if we demand something, then we can get the result within few seconds in the real time. So what happened in this ERP system? this erp system provide the integration with the various modules so basically sap has a uh, created different modules to handle the different departments they have created a module for finance they have created a module for sales and distribution they have created a modules for warehouse management they have created a module for material management they have created a modules for uh integrate they have created a module for customer relationship management so what they have done they have basically interconnected these modules to get the real time information by using this particular erp system the customer is going to place and query in the customer services and then after that will go to the sales office that will connect it to the warehouse that will connect it to the shipping and that will connect it to the finance but in erp customer services is directly connected with the finance with the shipping with the warehouse with the sales offices to provide a uh, real time information to the customer within a 
20 to 25 minutes. If we talk about the ordinary ERP systems, then it will take around approximate, you can say, 20 to 25 days to provide the information regarding your order. So this is the advantage of ERP over the other SAP ERP over the other ERP tools. If, I, if we come about customizations, then the customizations is one of the best thing which the SAP has provided. As the enterprise buyers are investing in functionality and improvement to their business operations. And ease of customization is a real need of organization. And they wanting to ensure a good fit between their ERP system and whatever their operational needs. SAP also offers customizations and integrations tools to make its software more flexible for its enterprise customer. Within the help of these tools, we can enhance the SAP at our own level. So, this feature regarding customization that SAP has provided, where the other ERP tools are lacking with this feature. If come about to the implementation cost and duration, then no doubt that the implementation cost to implement a SAP ERP is much higher than the other ERPs. But if we talk about duration, the cost is just part of implementation equation. Any CIO and project team are also concerned with the implementation duration. In this case, where the SAP excels. While the average ERP system customer take 25 to 30 months to implement. But if we talk about the average SAP customer is able to do so in four months less time. So time plays an important role in case of implementation. If we come out to the cloud adoption, and the cloud adoption is also being a growing number of organizations are migrated their product to the cloud. Whether it be through pure software as a service software or through traditional single instant landscape hosted by a third party provider. And if we talk about in memory technology, then SAP is making great hardware with their in memory database. As we heard about SAP HANA is differentiating itself as a highly functional all in memory system. Single platform can be a great advantage. It also has a drawback such as the cost of deployment and compatibility limitations. In-memory technology will allow 
customer to run essential ERP applications and analyt analytics fast. Ultimately providing for greater productivity and insight with the in-memory technology. If we talk about the feature of SAP, then SAP is a platform independent and it is very beneficial if someone is working on a window operating system, someone is working on a Unix operating system, there is no need to change the operating system if we have to work with the SAP. So everything which is developed and if we want to shift the application from Unix operating system to the Windows operating system that is more convenient and more portable you can see. Basically this thing has been possible in SAP because the most of the things, most of the activities done by the kernel. The kernel plays an important role whenever it comes to the make the SAP ERP a platform independent. So it provides the independent platform environment for SAP with the help of the kernel. If we talk about the database independent, then suppose you have a, some applications, say Java, BB programs, they require a drivers to establish the connection with the database. And then after they connect with the database. They require some language to communicate. They are not going to directly communicate with the database. And these drivers are provided by the database vendor. For example, Oracle gives their own drivers. SQL Server gives their own drivers. And if we talk about the SAP, in SAP we don't use any drivers. The drivers are integrated with the kernel so that kernel take most of the responsibility of SAP. If we talk about based on three tier architecture, then the key responsibility of the OS is the resource management. And the resources, memory, processor, devices, information. And the management is to keep track of the resources, enforcing a policy to allocate resources and deallocate. In the three attire architecture, basically the client server architecture. If we have a window server and there are the clients. And the client is using their own resources and Windows Server resources. So this is a called a popular as client server technology which is used by the SAP. So there are some disadvantages also if we talk about the architecture. So there are the presentation layers, there are the backend server layer. 
so which are going to be communicated if something is going to be changed suppose you can say every year the something tax is going to be changed policies of the governments are going to be changed or there is a competition in the market so due to that we have to change the business logic and their communication is going to the database so in this need we need not to do something at the presentation level so everything is going to be at application level i will show you in the further diagram the entire architecture of sap so this is a sap architect this the first upper part is where the sap gui this is a presentation layer or you can say sap front end which is in front of the user so this is a presentation layer second which comes into picture is sap instance and this we call the application layer and the last one which is database servers this is the layer a database layer where any kind of database can be reside either it's a oracle dbms either it's a informat either db2 okay ms sql server max db so on the presentation layers and then application layer and then the database layer the communication flow moves from the user sap ui gui and then after it interact with the application server once it interact with the application server then it further interact with the database server from database server after getting the information it again interact with the application server and then after view the information at the presentation level that is sap front end so every communication here from the presentation to the application server will go to the dispatcher and dispatcher will set the request queue and then that request queue is going to assign to the various processes either it's a dialog process either it is a batch process either it's update process spool process or enqueue dequeue process sap there are the various kind of process which generally are the dialog processes which are just led with the interaction and there are background processes which are running while some jobs are going to be scheduled into the backgrounds update processes which are required of a two kind b1 b2 they are depending upon to be immediately complete or they will be going to be later on complete so pull requests are basically whenever you are doing some printing applications you are running some printing application you are giving a print command then spool process come into picture and enqueue dequeue process will be coming when it's going to be updated the database so there is a particular shared memory which is being available at the application server level so the application server level take most of the responsibility to communicate with the presentation layer and with the database layer database layer as going to communicate they have a particular native language so dbms comes into picture which going to provide to fetch the information from the database and provide to the application server there are various hardware software requirements whenever we are going to start sap so i will not cover that
right now. So I will move to the next slide. So this is the complete architecture. Here is SAP Web Application Server, SAP Instance. And here is a dispatcher. Dispatcher is Q, which is going to be provided you D, D, V, V, S, E. There are the memory pipes. And there is a IC, ICM. So ICM basically going to use whenever you are going to connect with the web dyne prompts. So on those cases, this is going to be come into picture. Internet connectivity management manager is available here, which is going to connect with the HTTP, HTTP by using HTTP, HTTPS, SMBT. These are the protocols which are going to use and will going to display the application on the browser. So whenever we are working with the web Dynpro, this part come into the picture. Then again, same process will be followed in the memory pipe. And there are the various processes available in the application server which are going to connect with the database. So when they connect with the database, they further fetch the data and provide us a real-time solution. That is three-tier architecture. So presentation component, if I will give you an example, suppose you are going, user want to create a sales order, then the sales order you are going to create at the presentation level and the request is moving to the application server. And to take up the presentation component, end user fill that particular screen regarding that which is required and after that this is sent to the RY3 application application server and then after it is moving to the database various development tools are being provided by SAP above. So these are the development tools by using them you can get an applications in a particular software. You know the ABAP editor. ABAP editor in which we can do the programming and by using the programming we can design the various applications. So SAP has made this particular software so flexible that any organization which want a solution in their own terms, they can design and develop their own processes by using a web editor. There is a particular transaction for that is SC38. Data Dictionary Data dictionary is about data about data. And in data dictionary, we you create the global objects like database tables, views, search helps. All these activities we are going to create here in the data dictionary. Whatever we will create in the data dictionary that is going to be available globally within the SAP system. So user can use that particular object in any of the application where they are going to create. Screen painters. Screen painters are going to create particularly the GUI screens. Like all the screens which are shown in the standard SAP the user can use create their customized screen as per their business requirement for any business need 
the user can go the developer can create a go into the screen painter and create as per the business requirement so minimum painter is another tool which is provided to create again the gui part so everything if you have seen the sap screen then there are the various buttons and there is a command attached to them that has been designed in this menu painter we click on to the back button close button we are going to log out all these designing part has been done in the menu painter the function builder the function builders are going used to create function modules and the various function modules are available for specific purpose purpose to be covered by the business there are the various standard function modules which are available in a sap although with those standard function modules the developer can also create the function modules as per the business requirement so these using these function modules they can create a further one of sap application so lot of flexibility has been provided by the sap as per the organization or as per the end user requirement which are using their applications so they can modify they can add into that they can enhance their application which are already existing in the sap messages builder in the messages builder you can create an alert to the end user as a developer you will create a messages you will create a messages classes and on the basis of that you can create the messages you can provide the alert to the end user so there is a particular transactions which are being available in a sap for a web editor the development tool for this tool sap has created a transaction code so sap basically deal with the transaction codes to access their various application so if they have come into the developments then they have a web editor and they have created the transaction code for this is se38 for data dictionary they have created a transaction code se11 and for screen painter they have created se51 like that they have created the t codes for all their development tools by using them you can further more create the development environment in sap we talk about the future of sap with abap then there is a great future with the sap abap abap is still a core and central to a lot of functionality you can't say every designing every application thousands of tables number of around 12000 plus applications are developed by a web workbench so so much of applications which are being in sap has been developed by using advanced business application programming language so there are workbench in the abap where all the existing applications for various modules either it is sd either it is mm material management either it is controlling either it is finance related applications so all application has been designed by using a this business application programming language and most of their softwares 
most of their core softwares is a CRM, SRM. They are also written in a bank. If we talk about the UI5, then UI5 is a really big potential for a web developer. So UI5 is a collection of libraries that developers can use to build either the desktop and mobile applications that basically run on the browser. So if we talk about the ABAP CDS, then ABAP Core Data Services, CDS stands for the Core Data Services. This is the concept which is bring by while we are going to moving forward to SPHANA. So ABAP is also being playing an important role while we are talking about the HANA. So, so implement the general CDS concept for application server web. They use a platform independent data definition language to define CDS views and CDS table functions. That implement a semantic data model in a web. So here the ABAP dictionary also going to play a role. There is not been much difference. People are more confused about that. What is the future of SAP ABAP with respect to the HANA coming into the picture? The ABAP language is working as usual, performing functionality as usual on HANA. There is not been a much difference. The tables which we create in SE 11 under the development tool provided by the SAP, they have done some little bit changes into that. Previously, those tables were used as being a row storage. Now they have added the option for the column storage. They have provided, they have removed the indexing which was previously provided in the data dictionary while we are going to create some table. So they have provided some minor changes and currently using the ABAP as it is. Okay. So this was the CDS that is the infrastructure for defining and consuming semantically rich data model. So basically DDL is a data definition language which create and delete the object of a relational data. So I will say thank you very much. So this much from this webinar for you. I will say thank you very much.